Today I'm going to strip components off of a bunch of circuit boards and I've never made a video on how to do that. There's different techniques that make it easier uh, and I thought uh, while I'm stripping components I would uh, show some tips and tricks on how to do that. The first thing I usually do when I'm going to strip a board is I start taking off these wires and you can just go along and snip them off. I'll throw them in a box and save them because having small wires of different colors is usually a good thing. I mean, uh, when you're doing projects, these are a great source of different colored wires. So just go through and strip them off, uh, clean up the board, makes it a lot easier to work to work on as you're uh, desoldering. And then I'll set this aside for later use. Once all these wires are cut loose and out of the way, you can see that it's much easier to be able to work around the board without stuff flopping in the way and blocking your view. If components have long legs like this, I believe this is a thermistor here, comes over here, or this piece back here, if they have long enough legs, you know, you can save a lot of times just by snipping the, the component and removing it that way. This this will have plenty of lead for me to work with in the future. So, yeah, it's just a lot faster to do that. My strategy for stripping a board is to start with components on the outside of the board because that's where it's easiest to grab it with your fingers, it's easiest to get your tools on it and work with those. And also, there's another factor in making a component easier or hard to remove, and that is the number of leads on it. If a component has one, two, or three leads, then it's, you can remove it using simple techniques. If it's four or more leads, you're probably going to need something like this desoldering wick or a slurp gun to suck the solder out. Uh, but what I do is I will start with the simple things around the outside, get those out of the way, and then start working up to more difficult components and work my way across the board. If something is in my way that I do not want to recover, then I will just break it out of the way so I can get my hands in there. I won't waste a lot of time with it. I'll take a pair of pliers and snap it out of the way because I don't care about it, throw it in the trash, get rid of it, and keep moving forward. That way you can strip the most number of components in the shortest period of time and not waste a lot of it. Okay, so that's my basic uh, approach on attacking a circuit board to strip it. So let's say I have a, a one contact, one pin object that I want to remove like this uh, wire with a nice little jumper on it. It's pretty simple. I apply upward pressure. I can use pliers, forceps, whatever I'm using. I heat the bottom here and try to gently pull it out. Now be warned that when you are desoldering, a lot of techniques will flip solder, so make sure you're wearing uh, good eye protection, uh, you have proper clothes on and so forth because solder can come loose and go flying. Make sure anybody around is also protected. So for components with two leads, like this fuse, this resistor over here, or this capacitor, there's obviously different configurations. Let's start with the fuse. If I want to remove this, I can use something like a screwdriver. I can place it underneath there. If there's space, I can heat the lead on the bottom while I slowly twist the screwdriver and lift that right out of there. Another tool that works well is forceps. You can grab the lead and pull on it as you're applying solder. And the last one, which is my favorite and probably the easiest one, is to just put a safety pin underneath there like this and with one hand I can apply pressure on the safety pin like this and I can use my soldering iron to apply heat to the lead and this will pull this out of there nicely. Now again this technique will flip solder so use the proper precautions. Okay so let's look at other two lead type of components. This is a massive capacitor uh, that I want to recover out of there. It's a high voltage, high value capacitor. You can see both the leads on the ends go down through the board. Um, this lead sticks up much more than, than the other one. So 
this one is the taller one, this is the shorter one. So what I will do is I will apply heat to this one while rolling the capacitor this way. So this one will come out first, then I'll apply heat here and lift it out. So for this type of thing where I have a lot of lead to work with, this is actually very easy. Let's look at a capacitor where it's not, I don't have the leads, where it's set right down on top of the board. Let's see how we'll remove that one. Here are two capacitors that I want to recover. So what I'm going to do, my strategy will be to, these two leads belong to this capacitor. First, I will heat one lead like this while lifting up on the capacitor this way to pull it up and that will cause this to move up. It'll start coming out of the circuit board. Then I will stop, let it cool a bit, and then I'll start on this lead pushing down this way. And I just basically rock it back and forth out of there, applying heat from here to here to here to here. And it'll come out, it'll probably take, you know, three iterations, but once you get this technique down, these come out of here pretty fast and with very little damage or stress on the leads. The technique that works on these type of capacitors also work on things like this, where you can literally just rock them out of there. Things with longer leads will come out much faster you, because you've got a lot more room to work with. You can heat up one side and then the other, and pretty much this is a, a one cycle. You'll heat this once, take it all the way out, heat this up. The other side, take it out, and you'll be done with that. If you have a device with three leads on it like this, a transistor, a regulator, something like that, uh, if they are set in a tripod configuration like this one, what you can do is you can work each leg. You can uh, heat up one leg and move it out, and then heat up the next one, move it out, and then finally the last one. If they are all three across, like this one, you can usually put your soldering iron across all three at the same time and lift it out of there. Okay, so that's the theory behind it. We'll go do examples of all these. So you want to position your soldering iron so that you get the maximum contact that you can. Notice I'm using a really big soldering iron. I want to get the maximum heat flow going. I want to get this milled and I want to get it out of there. If you use a low wattage uh, soldering iron, you'll have to dwell on it too long. And what will happen is you'll end up damaging the component. You notice I didn't even melt the, the shielding on the wire. The insulation on the wire is still good. A lot of heat, get it out of there quickly, and uh, that will work well for you. If you need to use something to protect your hands, like a damp tissue, that will work. You can wrap a component with a damp tissue that will help keep the heat off. Or Let's go after this big capacitor right here, as I said before. This is rather simple. I want to get the maximum amount of tip on my on my uh, component lead. There's the first one. First one's out. And second one. So, uh, I've got myself a nice capacitor. Clean up the goop off of the off of the uh, leads. It's a good reason to keep your tip clean so that you don't uh, gunk up your components. And then move on to the next. Here's our capacitor from before. We'll start on the inside lead. Get to move up a little bit. Get that one up a little bit. That one's up, and there. So we have a nice capacitor. Clean up the leads. Clean up the 
Clean up the leaves, and we got another one. I want to get this transistor out of here, so I need to remove these fuses, so I'll just break these out of here. Like that one. Get the other one out of there. I can finish breaking these off, but at least then I have a way to reach this uh, transistor. And what I'm going to do is, you know, you want to unscrew these first. Uh, I'll attack this. I'm going to, I've loosened this already. I'm going to rock these out of here. So you want to make sure it's no longer attached to the heat sink. I want to recover the heat sink also. And a lot of times with the heat sink, you can just rock it back and forth like I started with this one, and it will pop out of there. Cover the hardware. Okay, that one came out too easily. Um, that's not good, but okay. I want to save the screw because it's threaded for this. And now, as you can see, I can easily go after this transistor without a lot of stuff in the way. Let me work on this one. Yeah, again, that one came out of there too easily. Okay, so. For this three-legged inline component, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to use this damp tissue, which will protect my fingers and it will protect the component. And I'm going to just lay the soldering iron across these three leads at the same time, hopefully keeping it in view. And yes, you can hear the heat transfer to the tissue, and there we have it. Clean up those leads a little bit, and we have a perfectly good component that we are relatively sure is not going to be heat damaged, and it's ready to go. I want this toroid out of here. It's got four legs. You can see them here. One, two, three, four. Let me see if I can walk that out of here. Um, sometimes you can do like opposing legs. And that one moved a little bit. That's a good sign. That one moved. Back to this one. Back to this one. Go to the opposite side. That one moved. That one moved. That one. That one back over here. One, two, three, four. It's almost there. And I have it. So, sometimes with four component items, you can walk them out of there if you got uh, got the right conditions. As you can see, I'm getting a pretty good amount of parts off of this board. Uh, the last one I really want off of here is this relay. Um, I don't really need any of these other components. I've got a big supply of them, so but I really want this 12 volt relay off of here. It has six connections, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, and I'm probably gonna have to use solder wick on it. Oh, let me see. Uh, yeah, I think I'll have to use solder wick. Solder wick, if you're not familiar with it, is a, uh, it, it acts like a paper towel for solder. When you start to fill it up, it turns silver. It requires more heat than just desoldering because you have to heat up the soldering wick, which is copper and carries away heat well. Uh, so yeah, that'll require more heat. Uh, it usually requires pressure to push it down into the, into the solder. So more heat, more pressure, but it works pretty well. Okay, well, let's give it a shot. There. I don't know if you can see that, but it just sucks it right in there. A lot of times, don't be too quick to move on to a new piece of soldering, uh, to solder wick, because sometimes when it's got a little bit of solder in it, it actually absorbs it better. And yeah, move it around. Right. 
doing a great job. I'm not sucking it all up, but it's okay. Okay, so that one's pretty good. It left a hole there. So that's a good omen. That's a good omen. This one, not so much. Aha, okay. Now sometimes you will not get all the solder out of the hole. So you grab the lead and you wiggle it around a little bit and then it will come loose. And okay, I wiggle them around a little bit, and as you can see, that end is loose. I've got two more connections on this end, and I should be able to do that without any solder wick. Solder wick's not cheap, so if you don't have to use it, great. And there we have it. One 12 volt relay desoldered. Just using some very basic uh, techniques and some very basic technology, just to soldering iron and some soldering wick, we got some very interesting components off of these boards today. We got uh, toroids, capacitors, um, heat sinks, power transistors, and so forth. So, and you can probably get 80% of the components off of these boards just using what we did today. Uh, with some more advanced techniques, we could probably strip them down farther, but that'll be another video for another day. Well, I hope you found this useful and interesting in your home DIY electronics projects.